Today I'm going to try to fix my vacuum leaks on the Jetta. So the other day I found the vacuum leak right here with this electrical tape. Alright, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but this is a vacuum leak. You can hear when my finger touches that. I've already taped this other one up and the PCB breather hose has been taped together, so we're going to try to fix that too. And here are the supplies that I got. I have some 5 16 fuel line, and I have some quarter inch fuel line. Now, this line right here, it goes to this little connector. So at first I had quarter inch fuel line, and it didn't really fit on here, it seemed a little tight. And I'm still not sure which one I'm gonna use, but that's 0 .31, which if you look up the conversion, is 5 sixteenths I'm pretty sure so to replace the PCV breather hose we have to take it off it has a squeeze fitting here you have to squeeze that until this little ring pops up same one down here and then over on the intake you're gonna have those four little clamps right there You'll have to lift each one of these up and pull back at the same time. So now we can take the old hose off. Oh no, we have that T-connection on it. You know, I forgot about the T-connection. We gotta squeeze this white clamp and then that should come off. Yep. So originally my thinking was to go from here to over here with one inch hose, but I forgot this one was teed off of the bottom of it. But the other thing I was thinking... So maybe once I take this electrical tape off, there's a T right here, a plastic one, that I could probably use. So actually I'm going to put that on hold for right now and we're not going to destroy that yet. We're going to try to fix the smaller vacuum line first. We got the PCB breather hose off. We have this end of this vacuum line off. Now this isn't the one that was giving us a problem recently, but we know it's bad. So we're going to go ahead and replace both of them. We'll pop it out of these little holders here. And this is a coolant line here above those. You can unplug it over here. You squeeze at the top and bottom. Pull it this way, pull it back this way. You guys probably thought I was going to cut that on my intake. I'm not as supposed to play with sharp things, that's why, you know, I got stitches in my thumb. So, now we'll take this, put it under there, loop it around, stick it back on there, and that's pretty good. I could probably make that a little shorter if we have to, to keep it away from the exhaust heat. Now we have to figure out something for this one, which is a little bit longer. So we got the electrical connector off. What I'm going to do next is, it has a regular hose clamp on it here. So I just twisted it until this is on top. Um, you know, I'm going to replace this line anyway, so. Alright, so we got this end off. So up here it's got the same style connection as the other one. Where you squeeze top and bottom and it should come off. So sometimes it helps to squeeze it push it on more and then pull it off. So that one was a real struggle and then that's what I just did to get it off. How um, did we even put these parts in here?
That's our problem right there. That's where it was leaking. So you can see this is supposed to have like flex and bend to it, like I said, so when the engine moves, but it's just broken and no good anymore. So what we have to do now is get it apart at this T connection down here. And then we're just going to slip our line on right here where this line is. And then we'll still use these connections because I think that's still good inside this heat shield. There we go. Now let's see which hose fits on here. Is it our quarter inch? Quarter inch is tight. You could fit quarter inch on there. That's .32, so that'd be 5 sixteenths. I'm going back and forth on which size I should use. Here's 5 sixteenths, and this is how easy it slips on and off. You know, it fits, but it's not tight. And the uh, quarter inch is going to be really tight, so... So I ended up taking the 5 16 fuel line off and putting a quarter inch on because I think that's tighter and I don't have to worry as much about zip tying it. See the 5 16 would just pull right off but this doesn't so we're pretty happy about that. So that's it. That takes care of our evap lines. We just have to plug this little sensor back in here. So on to step two which is going to be destroying the PCV breather hose to replace it. We're going to have to cut it right here get those separated. And we're going to have to cut it up here. So I have my one inch line on there. And we're just doing a little test fit now. Before I cut this piece up to make sure it would fit on there. Because this has to connect down to there. I need to know if there's enough clearance in here before I ruin this part. So we have to take this off. So I'm going to try to saw these apart. Very carefully. There. There's the part we need. So now the next thing we have to do, we can put this back on in a second. But I've got my connection sitting here so I could kind of measure it. So in my precise measurement, device here, I'm going to say that we're going to cut it right at the R, because that's where we need to sleeve it up to and we'll put a clamp on it. So my plan was to stick this in here. So you can test it by putting your hand over here, covering this hole, and then blowing in the other end is probably what I recommend. So now that we've got that clamped on, we'll come back over here, and we just need to put this line into here and put our vacuum line on the bottom. So everything was going pretty smooth, but if you see this clamp here, it hits that box, so I can't click that in all the way. So we're going to have to rotate our clamp. If that's the biggest problem we have today, we're doing good. So we have this hose all connected. Got it connected up there. I might have cut it a little too long. I might take it off and take a little bit off of it. Now we just have to feed our small hose down into here. We're going to need both ends. If you'll see, when I put it in, it's still pushing the hose that way a little. So I could probably cut a little bit more off. And then I still didn't really like the way it was fitting, so I cut that little bit off. And I'm happy I did. So if you remember a second ago, this was like way over here more, and it was pushing on this plastic, and now, if you look at the fitment here, this is like one finger perfect. So it wasn't working when the clamp was on the front side, but we flipped it over, put it on the back, now we're good to go. So that's how you replace your broken 
brittle PCV breather hose with some one inch hose. That's only $20. This one's $183. So do what you want. So when I just started the car, I had to pump the gas a couple times, which is what I thought. I didn't think fixing the vacuum lines was going to change that. Pretty sure I need a fuel filter. So as soon as that gets here in the mail, we'll change the fuel filter. But I haven't got the lean on idle code again, so. So my PCV breather hose was broken into four pieces. I took all the electrical tape off just to show you guys. That was the only thing holding it together was electrical tape. Electrical tape will hold it together for a little while, but eventually you should do this. Now that I have all my vacuum lines and breather hose fixed, we can put our strut tower brace back in. So I replaced both of these broken EVAP lines. This one had tape on it. This one was broken here. That one was only held together by tape, the PCB breather hose. And if you look over here from the side, you can see that new hose in there. Everything fits like it should. The old PCB breather hose, the short one, all under the engine cover. So everything worked out pretty good. Having a bunch of speakers in your trunk isn't going to get you home, but having a bunch of extra fuel line and one inch line could. Extra serpentine belt, we're never getting stranded.